years. At the age 12, my mother says, all that stuff's not real. So I almost pulled away from it, but at 14, I pulled away from the church because I asked the minister, I said, what is God? What's God look like? Well, what's God do? What's it look like in heaven? And I said, you can't answer one of those questions. This isn't a path for me. So then I searched out 14 paths, and then I went into multiple religions, which all had zero proof of God. So I, I kept my search going. But all along that path, I was starting to deal with UFOs and everything. So in the interim, I met my first, my second wife, and she was in a path called Ekankar. And she didn't want to take me because I was in hypnosis, and she was afraid that it didn't go along with the religion. So I said, ask the, the, the teacher if I can come. So I went, and, and this is the beginning of my greatest experience because it opened up what I, I needed opened up. I was in a room with 13 people. And we sat around, and they were all talking about uh, different experiences and everything. And they said, okay, we're going to do a spiritual exercise. I almost started cracking up right there. I said, what's a spiritual exercise? Jumping up and down and saying, thank you, God. Uh, So they all said, okay, close your eyes. And they all started chanting a sound. And I'm looking at everybody. My eyes are still open. And they're all chanting. And I said, this is funny. And I had to bite my tongue so I didn't laugh too loud. But all of a sudden, my tongue was so sore from biting it so hard, I had to stop biting my tongue. So I said, what the heck? I closed my eyes, and I just started going, you. Oh. I was doing that. Well, om, om's for one path. U is for Ekankar. It's H-U. They call that the name of God. But I started doing that. All of a sudden, somebody was in back of me, pushing down on my head really hard. And I'm trying to push my head back up. And it's getting harder and harder. And it's like, just do it yourself. Push on your head really hard. And then you take your hands away real fast. You come flying up. After that, I was standing in front of my body. And I looked around. I saw all 13 people there. And they were all chanting and and doing what they were doing. And, And I'm looking at my body, looking at myself sitting in the chair. And I said, wow. And I look up. And the ceiling opened up. And this giant ball of light came. And I grabbed it. I saw the next 10 years of my life. Uh, It was incredible because it was my first real direct experience. I was a witch when I was 16. I learned how to use almost, uh, there's 32 psychic abilities. I learned 31 of them. There was one I really wanted to learn that I couldn't. But I learned all about them, how to use them, and realized I could never use them again. But in the interim, I, I became empathic for two years. And that's scary because if you could actually read and see other people's feelings and emotions, it'll blow you away because there's very few people talking about anything good in their mind. So I begged God, the Spirit, to take it away, and I finally got rid of it about two years later. But my path started as I started getting out of my body, uh, the astral plane and dealing with the astral body and all that. Uh, I've been here for a while. It's amazing how many things you've just talked about that uh, I've – it had very similar, and I'll, I'll read them off here very quickly or mention them. I'm trying to take notes as you go so I don't lose my memory. Um, cool. It, it, with regards to, you, I think you said like at six years old, you had your first uh, out-of-body experience. Uh, in my right. case, uh, I was six years old, and I was uh, had tonsillitis, and the doctor performed um, uh, tonsillectomy on me. And uh, my mother took me in. The doctor said he was the same doctor that had operated on me to remove the cyst over my left eye in which uh, my heart stopped beating, and I was, I was classified as dead for over uh, 49 seconds. And um, they used to use a thing they call a pull machine to come because I'd swallowed my tongue and I turned blue and the whole bit. Um, and and that, that was kind of the first out-of-body experience. And then one of the things that as I got older, uh, I actually practiced uh, remote viewing and uh, being able to, to rise above and look down at my body there and then transport, transport – my entity, if you will, to whatever um, location and place that we, as a group, we're looking to try to uh, zero in on events and things happening other places, not only just on the planet Earth, but in other locations. So um, we've had similar experiences, I would think, with out-of-body experiences. And um, I'm wondering if many people who um, are experiencing things like this have probably had this the same type of experience that you and I have. That's that's very very interesting to me. So keep going. Well, we're, we're, I'm sure we we may have touched touched spirits at one point or not. <laughs> See that 
that became I was involved in that religion for 20 years. So I and they give you initiations to the realms that you can go to, and that's what initiation you get. Uh, certain things pull me out of it. I don't want to go into that because it did help me take the giant step in my life. But through that, I experienced so many things. Then I started seeing all my past lives uh, in detail. And out of all my lifetimes, I could only say there's three important lifetimes. Not that everyone didn't help me take a step and things like that. I was a, every kind of religion, path, leader, this, that, in religions and things. But I, I don't want to say certain things, but uh, I can say it uh, as far as I always was protected in all my lifetimes. I'm protected now from any alien race. I'm protected from a lot of things. Uh, I'm affiliated to a certain race, which I actually was before I came to this physical world. And this guy, Corey Goody, you know who that is, right? Of course. Well, he's talking about the blue race. I I told him I'll debate him anytime. He's here in Hawaii right now uh, with uh, Eisenhower, with Joan Ocean. And she, she lied to me, so I don't even want to be friends with her no more. As I said, do you need a speaker? And she goes, oh, we don't have no room. And then I see she puts a bunch of names on there. And I, I just said, okay, just tell me you didn't want me, period. But uh, she lied to me. She did a lot of bad things. So I disowned her. But I told Corey Good, I said, you want to talk about the Blue Race? Please, I'll directly talk to you if you want, if you think you know about them. But I, I, I've been dealing with so many different things at the same time. Six of my best friends have been missing, disappeared, or killed. So... Uh, I deal with people that talk about truth. I don't like to deal with liars, and I told TJ that I can't deal with people that come on with stories that have no proof, no meaning, and be- definitely no beneficial help to the world. Uh, what I say, I agree with if that. It's gonna, yeah, I agree with you. If it's going to help mankind, they need to hear it. But telling that the reptilians want to come down here for dinner, I mean, that's not going to help nobody. Uh, preparing for it and everything else, I mean, we got to prepare for being human. I said, if you First, learn what soul is and, and being human means. We could take a giant step. If the world worked together, we would be going through the universes. We'd be having all kinds of incredible things going on on the planet. And what do we got now? Murder, rape, abuse, kill, children, killing ch- children. It's horrible. Right. right. So yeah. we Two need, moms. like you said. But here's, here's a little way I look at ascension. It's just my viewpoint. Uh, TJ talks about ascension. She, she was dealing with that word many years ago. Uh, to me, only one person I know all through my past lives went through Ascension, and that was Jesus. But I studied with a medicine woman who actually teaches the Emerald Tablets, exercises, its techniques to work with. She went into an Aborigine tribe inside the pyramid, and there's a certain exercise you do to go through Ascension. And it's what helps you prepare and go through it. I mean, if you do the exercise and everything, not everybody's going to go through it. But there's a way to go through the pyramid, to go out the other side, to learn psychic abilities and everything which Jesus did. So uh, to me, ascending is what I keep telling TJ. is that when you ascend into the higher realm or the next realm, you're moving from here to there. Ascension, you're assuming, you, you ascend. Ascension means you're growing spiritually. And it's pretty hard to grow spiritually in the physical reality. I mean, I listen to what people say. I mean, only the, mo- the three most spiritual people quote, quoted as being the most spiritual people do not talk about God, and they do not talk about spiritual truth. So I said, the laws of this planet are critical. If we can't live by our own laws here in this dimension, how could we go to another dimension where, the re- where those get even ten times harder? But I'll leave it there, and I'll go back to you. Well, no, I, I agree with you on that as far as uh, how difficult it is for people to uh, – to actually see in the future and see where they're supposed to be. Uh, that's where the out the earth to me and this lifespan and this physical body that I'm in now is all part of a training experience. And um, I've been involved in, in, in regression with Dr. Lesson and, and others and, and my, my past experiences with hypnotic regression, self-hypnosis, et cetera that has helped me uh, gain better understanding as to what my purpose is here, what I've been doing, as well as making contact with um, uh, extraterrestrials and in, in, uh, other locations. So we're, we're at, a, a, at a tipping point, as I'll call it, um, here on Earth, and that is in preparation for full and total disclosure. 
And um, it's, it's, I've been saying that for over two years, and that's amazing how many people um, that have large followings are all using the term full disclosure. And what's the experience that we're going to go through? How's it going to be made public, et cetera? So um, I think we are living in very, very interesting times. And hopefully our past experiences that we've had and our hope, you got to open your mind to be able to, to be able to take in the information. <coughs> Forgive me. Too much um, short air up here at this altitude. <coughs> we're almost a mile high here where I live. Anyway, um, we're making we're making progress, and and this is all. Um, I heard David um, Wilcox saying he's expecting in September that there's going to be not a cataclysmic event, but a. a a world recognized event of the existence of extraterrestrials and making contact with the earth. So we we are living in I love the elegy. You you are living in very interesting times and I think we're all a part of it. And what we're doing now is part of that disclosure. And uh, hopefully we got it right this time. And I, I'm hoping well, see, here's, my experiences. Here's something something really <laughs> scary about that. All right. Planet Earth has been visited by so many different alien races. Even TJ's husband said he worked with 37 alien races. Bob Dean said he worked with 37 alien races in the Army as well. Now, I said, can you name 37 alien races? I know a friend of mine who wrote, a, wrote two books, and she worked with 147 alien races and wrote them down, described them, and everything. But in the interim, they're all different, and they all have different agendas. I mean, as many alien races, especially the reptilians, uh, the Yep. Now, I, did you say you work with the Draconians, or was that uh, – no, that was uh, the other person. Well, someone else Sorry. talked to you about it, but I'm very well aware of it, so go ahead. But uh, the Draconians are, are different. They're all different. But here's the thing. Now, and that's why I said they're all – and I, you have to accept this. It's just my viewpoint. They're all under the control of Lucifer. Lucifer wants to keep everybody in these lower realms because when you go outside of that <clears> – <throat> you'll see what God created. And it has nothing to do with anything we perceive or touch or experience here. It's beyond all that, and it's a thousand times more incredible. And until you can experience that, do you realize, because, I mean, you go to the yes, like, oh, it's beautiful, I can fly, I can do this, I don't have to eat, I can, yeah, it's okay. But it, it's like how far are you willing to go? And each step you take makes it harder to go from that step to the next one if you go to that space. So on planet Earth, you're in hell. It's easy to take as many steps as you can because you want to get further and further away from it. And it makes it that much easier to attain a higher spiritual awareness if that's what you choose to find. So for me, searching out gods and deities and all that, I work with four deities directly. And what they train me has nothing to do with the physical or astral plane, change and traveling and all those things. It's just a game. It's like playing... Like uh, a game of chess, a game of Monopoly, but it's still kind of like the Matrix, playing in this game that you're in, which most people are in, and they don't see beyond it or can go beyond it. So uh, no, that, in my experience that, of death. I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, what would you state about death? Say it again. I was just saying, in my, in my experiences of death, uh, okay. one, I really <laughs> wanted to leave the planet. Uh and they, what they showed me was 10 times more incredible than what, what I already knew. So, but for me, what was the most important thing ever to come to this planet? What race but anything important to planet Earth? And I, I would debate I, uh, Saucer on uh, the Enochs and all that, as far as Enoch being Jesus and all that concept of uh, who they were, what they were, creating us. We were human. There were seven races. Well, really, there was nine brought to this planet. Five of them left, only four of them stayed, and they're the races that are still here. So when he says, when they believe that the Anunnaki created us, no, they created our thinking to make it the way they wanted us to think. But the whole story about gold is the biggest lie all through history. Anunnaki never needed gold. They didn't need to come here to mine gold. Uh, the same as we can make gold right now. And if we can make it right now, then the alien races could have made it 10,000 years ago. But then again, if they needed gold, they would just go to a, a, a temple and take all their gold because they had piles of it everywhere. So the idea of them coming here for gold is, is so ridiculous. Uh, their planet needs the, the gold to surround the planet. No, they're intelligent. They're 
thousands of years beyond us. They don't need well, our that technology. Was written, that was written on our planet. 